Hey guys, what's happening? So, I thought I'd show you a little CNC project I'm working on. Um, this is actually my 3D printed prototype of it. But I'll go down under my uh, Bronco and I'll show you what I'm doing. But it's a, it's a rear, uh, well, it's for the rear adjustment of a, of a Data 20 on an early Bronco. So it's actually like the cover. And I'll show you what's going on with that, but I'll go under it. And I wanted to do it under my uh, 3018 CNC. Uh, conversion is a 3018 CNC with the ball screw conversion containment system upgraded brushless spindle so a lot of different things um, but this is the actual chunk of aluminum I bought to do it so this, this will be actually the most extensive aluminum project I've done this so far um, so I don't know if it's going to work or not but I've done uh, quite a few parts already with aluminum um, well I mean, that's how I knew I had to make a lot of improvements is that every single time I would you know, make a part, I would figure out, okay, well, the spindle wasn't tight, or it wasn't, you know, it was too much vibration, so, um, but these are some of the prototypes I had, you know, when I was trying to get the hole spacing correct, um, you know, I was designing just kind of like the hole spacing, but once I got the hole spacing correct, um, then I designed the actual part, and then, uh, hopefully, I'll be able to create a tool pass and cut it out, but let me go onto the truck, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So there's a Bronco. It's a 1966 Bronco. And I'll show you the uh, transfer case. Alright, so the cover. I make a cover for this thing. Yeah, one of the things with these early Broncos is they had a horrible system of uh, shims that leak. So I want to design a new system for that. Like that. And it would also add the benefit of cooling. And another thing I want to do is I'm going to create, hopefully, a, another cover plate out of CNC. All right, so I have my piece mounted and the Mach 3 zeroed out. So the first operation is going to be a facing operation. So I just want to take out 0.3 millimeter off the face of it. Then I'm going to come out and do the uh, cuts internal here, the actual fins. But uh, like I said, I'm still learning this stuff, so this will be my first facing operation. Two flute end mill, 6.35 millimeter. Uh, yeah, I think in metric because I started out in 3D printing. So, um, yeah, so everything I do is in metric. I, I think in metric when it comes to like CNC and, and this other stuff. Um, all right, so I'm gonna get the file and look at it's going. So it's been a couple weeks. I'm always a little nervous firing this up, but that's gonna be the face operation. It's gonna go back and forth and coolant to turn on. Um, so worst case scenario, I'm gonna snap that bit in that two flip bit right there so this is actually where it's going to really show the um, how even or how the tram is how parallel and even the the bit is with the uh, with the piece here the bed because if it's not even it's going to leave like little grooves this way you'll see so I mean it looked pretty good before so all right So that's kind of a bummer. Um, actually, I only have about five millimeters clearance because this piece is so big on the top. <laughs> so I guess I can bring the bit in further um, up, further up, or I can. Um, I've had to re zero everything again now. So we'll at least re zero the uh, Z axis. Um, all right, so that's what we'll do. I'm going to bring this up further for now. All right, so since I can't um, go any higher in it with the bit two, so I'm going to have to go back into my G code, back into Fusion 360 and only make this thing go like five millimeters up because I'm at the almost at the limit switch already. So I gotta figure that out. Um, maybe I can bring my spindle up a little bit. I mean, this piece is probably bigger than I'm used to dealing with, so. Um, you know, this is all part of the learning process, so. All right, let's try that again. So I brought the clearance down to five millimeters. It's only gonna come up five millimeters out of 10 because I'm actually right on it. Play. What the? <laughs> What's going on with this thing? Um. Why didn't it go up five? All right. 
I didn't Z it out right? I don't know. All right. I'm do my third try here. Yeah, messing with the heights in Fusion 360. What happens is it goes up too high, it hits this and it throws off the Z and we'll go down too low. Take a while, probably about uh, four passes, probably. So it means they got about 0.3 millimeter off. Well, uh, either, either the part's not straight, the bed's not straight, uh, or maybe the material's not straight. It could be the clamps, it could be the add bolt. They're down the bottom. I don't know. Probably use less step over. Alright, so when you do a face operation, that's when everything becomes blindingly obvious. Your issues with the uh, device. Alright, so I decided to flip around. I'm going to do another pass going the other way. So I'm going to take another 0.3 millimeter off. Um, that way it's all even, nice and even here. Um, all right, let's get this going. Run the same G-code over again. All right, so I'm putting out another spacer. Yeah, I want to get this in even here. Um, yeah, definitely on the low side. Um, well, this side is actually uh, too high, so I gotta bring it down a little bit. And then uh, maybe file off a little bit of my, my, my shimmering here, just a little bit on some sandpaper. To bring that in just a little bit. But yeah, if you actually have problems here, you know, it's gonna be when you're doing a facing operation, that's when you see leveling issues and like all the different alignment issues. All right, so I did some, in another video, I did some, uh, I recalibrated this whole thing, all the axis again, just because I can't have that. That's just too much. It's too ridiculous. Um, so I'm going to reface this thing again with all my new, it's pretty dialed in now. So um, I would say within 0.1 millimeter. Um, I mean, I even got my little tool on it. So did another video about that, using this thing on it. Dial indicator. All right, so I'm going to do this again. Hopefully I can get this as flat as possible. Down. Yeah, because it was so long down here, it's going to take me a lot of passes to clean it up. It's a very mirror-like finish on that side, and I think this debris is just a, uh, I don't know if it's extra trimming being cut or what, but very, very minor. I got the, I keep on shimming this, you know, until I got the right bit. So it wasn't cutting so many edges. Alright, so I'm going to do the finish, we'll come back. Alright, so there it is. Took me a few hours. Probably four or five hours shimming, getting this right. So, a 
couple of small ridges here. I think they should step over, but very smooth up here. Yeah, I mean that's like a, I mean if you're gonna have problems, I mean if you want to get everything dialed in, aligned on your on your CNC machine, do a phasing operation. That will tell you all your problems. <laughs> all right. Well, I mean it's pretty amazing what you can do with a 3018 CNC. I mean, really, I mean it's just a well, I mean besides the spindle, I guess, and the ball screws, but you know it's not linear rails. You know it's still running the linear rods. So um, yeah, I like to do linear rails, but. All right, so the next operation, this will just be the facing operation, and then the next one will be the actual cutting out the part here. I'm gonna be like doing the, uh, all right, I'll be cutting out the, uh, this edge right here, cutting out the uh, part. So I'm just gonna be doing it, well, because I don't have, I have the free version of, uh, what's it called? Fusion 360, you have to do individual operations. But the main thing is once I start this operation, I'm gonna wanna hold the zero. For all the other operations, I'm not going to want to. Re I'm not going to want to. I won't turn the, the CNC machine off at night. That way, it holds at zero. All right. 